Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the draw analysis for the World Cup draw. Boy, it take, took me a whole lot of time to get this one sorted so, so that I'm still not quite done. So the graphs you see in here are not the ones that I nicely do for this is Excel and blah blah blah. No, this is really bare bones in the software R that I'm doing it. But I think I can explain you through it and I get the most points I will get across that I want to get across. I just It was just more important for me to get this video out now and then move back into club soccer. And yeah, the rest will come once uh, the World Cup will roll around. Uh, before we go, actually a little bit more into the nitty gritty of the uh, draw itself. And at the end, I give you the prediction that my uh, soft, that, that my model gives you, you got my personal thoughts a little bit later on and I, I may sprinkle it in um, as well during the, uh, during, during the video, but I will stick with what the model gives us, which uh, is not very surprising, but it's also very good to understand the draw a little bit better. I mean, you see it already up there, who will be the first four teams and pretty much in that order, that much I can give you uh, already. But um, we also got the kickoff times and I'm honestly, oh, I forgot to turn on the light. I look a little, <laughs> that's why it looks so, um, here, better. Uh, I saw the kickoff times and I gotta tell you, uh, I'm not so excited about this. It's, uh, I think it's uh, 11, two and five. And I wonder where, where where is the evening spot? I mean, uh, yeah, it will allow me. I mean, just uh, from a personal point of view, it will allow me to actually summarize the day after the games. That is a positive. So maybe that takes a little bit away from uh, uh, from that stress. On the other side, I'm thinking, yeah, especially eleven. I mean, this just cuts right into my uh, schedule many in many many ways. Not only work. I mean, I can do program and have a game on, that's not the problem. But also, you know, uh, you have games at lunchtime and so on. So I'm not so happy. Also that the opening game is only the third game, uh, <laughs> which is also funny. I mean, the um, nominal opener is, of course, Qatar against Ecuador, but it's only the third game. That's the five o'clock game on the first match day. We'll start actually with the Netherlands against Ecuador. Uh, Netherlands... Uh, um, against Senegal, which is actually a pretty good game. Qatar against Ecuador is the opening game. It's a pretty good game, that one, I have to say. So we'll take it from there as well. But yeah, I'm uh, not very, very, very excited about those uh, kickoff times, at least around here. And I can imagine if you're living in North America, you are basically... Uh, it's, those are even more horrible. But yeah. The World Cup is in Asia, that's fine. Um, I, I also, as you know, the time difference now between um, Austria and Qatar is only one hour, but you know, there is a time change, so that's why uh, it gets them to two hours. And yeah, seven o'clock kickoff. Okay. Let's not talk about that. Let's talk about the draw itself. And I have to say, one beauty of this draw is that kind of the the nations that are rated highest, and we're saying Brazil, France, Belgium, and uh, Argentina. Now, we may discuss that, but currently all the ratings that I have, have uh, if I average them out, those four nations come out on top, and pretty significantly so. Uh, I mean, the next one is England, and that's already a drop uh, below. So it really seems that those four nations... I. Personally, I don't think the Belgium is that, 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 that great. But if we look at it just by the numbers, it's really beautiful how those four nations got separated out. They each get their own quadrant, more or less. So uh, we don't have, if everything pans out nicely, we don't have them actually meeting uh, up uh, until uh, the, uh, un the semifinal. So that is a beautiful draw. We also got overall relatively even groups and now let's uh show you the first graph here i have here the groups a b c d e f g h you see the average ratings that my model has you see on the left vertically you see uh group a the black dots are the teams from pot one the red dots are the teams from pot two 
the green ones from pot three and the four ones, uh, the blue ones from pot four. So if you go, um, since group A is the only one where not the pot one team is the top team, uh, in group A we have the favorites are the Netherlands, the red dot, then Qatar, then it is Senegal and then it's Ecuador um, in blue. But you see already how close together this group is. This is definitely the most competitive group out there. However, it also uh, is the one with the second, and that's the gray dot here. The gray dot kind of give you the average. It's also a, one of the uh, lowest ones in terms of the overall quality of the teams. Uh, other tied groups are group B. You see the black dot is England, of course, and the red dot USA. And then we have, of course, green is at the moment Iran and you see that Iran is actually quite highly rated and the blue dot is the fourth Euro that's the average of the fourth uh, European team average a weighted av average uh, Wales is the favorite of go India they are weighted higher of course than Scotland and Ukraine respectively so uh, just saying that this might change out I could have included that in the graph and so on and 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 so forth I mean the least interesting or you know the, the one with the lowest average is of course the last group age where we have Portugal which already you know of all the pot one teams outside of Qatar pot, uh, Portugal is definitely the lowest rated one uh, Uruguay is relatively close so it makes it a little bit com competitive and then um, we also have Korea in there as we'll see Korea is actually a team that's quite happy with the group and then you have Ghana that really really drags it down um, if we look over, I think it is pretty competitive. I mean, uh, the interesting part is that in Group F, um, gr uh, gr uh, group, group F is the Belgium-Croatia uh, group. Just let me uh, go Belgium, Bel Bel I don't know it by now, and Canada and Morocco. I still don't know the groups by heart. Most of them I do, but that, that is what. So uh, you don't see the green dot, which would be um, Canada. No, it would be Morocco. But Morocco and Canada are so close to together, it's really, really, really tight. So that's also a relatively competitive group, especially since, I mean, uh, it is Belgium ahead of the others, but then Croatia is in there, Morocco. I mean, we said already there could be a little bit of an upset. But yeah, over, I think it's rather even, the groups are nice. Um, I personally think that the rating for Spain is relatively low between Group B, so they're very close to Germany. I also think that Germany is, at least in those ratings, a little bit underappreciated as well. So now, based on these, uh, let's look at winners and losers from the draw. I think that's uh, also very interesting to uh, see for sure. And uh, those I evaluate in uh, two ways. The first one is, if you look at the group per, per, per se, how much did your chances improve to make it into the knockout stage? That I think is the first level. And the second level then is, um, how much did it change your chances of actually winning the World Cup? And so um, I would say we'll start out now groups A and D only qualified teams because I it's really hard to account for the other slots. So it's really only qualified teams now. Um, and how their, ch their chances improved to qualify for the next stage. And we see already that uh, the first four of our teams, and again, color coded, pot one is black, pot two is red, pot three is green, pot four is blue. We see already that while Qatar has a slight decrease, a relative decrease, so their chances, uh, you can li li literally uh, read it, the Qatar has about a 1% decrease in their chances of qualifying, which uh, suggests, yeah, maybe they got, especially from Papa, to a tougher team that they could have expected. However, the Netherlands that I proclaimed, uh, Still, I'm wearing the Netherlands, um, that I proclaimed uh, that might be the big winners, they're actually not overall, but you see, in terms of qualifying for the next round, looks quite good. Senegal definitely got a huge boost. I mean, you got, after all, um, in the group with Qatar, suddenly you have a chance because uh, Senegal is relatively close to Qatar in terms of that. And then Ecuador also definitely boosted. Uh, not so much a happy picture for Group B, where England, USA, Iran... And it's probably the European team in there that really, really annoys them. And Iran, very, as we saw, Iran is relatively highly rated. I also thought that Argentina will be very happy with their group. Yes, I mean, Poland and Saudi Arabia definitely uh, boost them a little bit, but the chances are not that big. And then uh, Tunisia definitely got hammered in their group because uh, whatever will be, they're probably the, the weakest team in their, their group. You get France, slight increase, you get Denmark. 
Tunisia and whatever Peru is, I think that's why Denmark got boosted. Um, moving over to the other three groups, we have now Spain, Germany and Japan all receiving a little bit, a bit, a bit of a boost because, you know, you get uh, the, uh, is it the Costa Rica? Uh, yeah, it should, be, it, should, it, should, it should be Costa Rica, New Zealand. So that makes it actually easy. I'm actually surprised that Japan got boosted that, that, that much. Um, we saw already the competitive group, uh, Belgium, Croatia, Morocco and Canada. I was surprised that Canada got the boost here. Uh, but I potentially could see um, that, you know, with Morocco, you get an opponent that's kind of your size and Croatia is within reach. Uh, so in that sense, uh, it's definitely in, in, in interesting. The Brazil, Switzerland, Serbia, Cameroon group uh, is a tough group. Overall, uh, not so much impact on Brazil. Serbia is maybe one of the nasty opponents from uh, pot three, but for Switzerland, Serbia and Cameroon, they're all not happy. Conversely, we already saw Portugal, Uruguay and Ghana all very, very happy. All their chances of advancing boosted over what could have happened. And so uh, when I said the change, the draw actually boosted the chances of ad advancing considering all the other permutations that could have happened. So this is now uh, the draw impact for uh, the... Uh, for advancing to, 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 to the next round, but of course we need to also talk about winning the World Cup. Now this is a little bit more fuzzy because the chances, I mean Brazil has the highest chance at the moment at 13 per percent and then it's France and Belgium around 10 percent. So uh, those probabilities are rel relatively low and with only 10,000 safety simulations, they're also not very exact. So th uh, take this with a little bit of grain and salt and uh, a pinch of salt and you know all the flip-flops, it looks like humongous changes, but Cutter's chances got boosted, and this is now taking all the tree and the paths in. It come whereas the Netherlands and England and also the US are definitely down. Because you have kind of nasty opponents down the road in your path. Um, winners, <laughs> Tunisia, go figure. Whereas France definitely also boosted. France actually got Overall, not such a bad draw. Uh, and if I go now for the other ones, we see that very little impact for Spain, uh, Germany, Belgium and Croatia. But then suddenly, uh, if you make it out of the group for Brazil, your chances increase. Same thing goes for Portugal, Uruguay, Korea, Ghana. That last group, all those received relatively good draws. As I said, I don't want to pay too much, too, too much uh, weight on these chances, but I thought it's very, very interesting because now we see kind of the interplay between the uh, the groups and how the final three pans out. And as as we'll see, the Portugal, Uruguay, Korea, Ghana group, whoever gets out there is uh, there is not a, uh, a bad chance of making it all the way to the semifinal. Brazil is just strong, strong enough, and also if you survive the uh, the, the, the the group with Brazil. Going forward, uh, you play against Portugal, Uruguay, Korea, Ghana, which does not seem uh, that hard. And then, yeah, uh, Germany or whatever is in there. And I think in order to understand this better, let's talk about, and I, fortunately, I don't have the graphic radar ready. I will talk you now through the groups, how I actually, uh, the model sees them pan out. Group A. As I said, it's a very, very tight group with expected points ranging from the Netherlands 4.7 to 3.6. There's only one point. So a really, really, really tight, tight group. But the Netherlands and Qatar will go out, uh, will come out of this group, which is a prediction that I actually would agree with. I don't see Qatar getting eliminated on home soil, um, although Senegal probably has something to say in there. Group B, it is England ahead of USA, ahead of Iran, ahead of the European qual qualifier. That very much depends on the European. If Wales goes in there, Wales are rather close, uh, uh, go right between the US and the EU. Iran. Uh, the other two, 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 two teams would actually go a little bit uh, below. So yeah, but England and USA, uh, a little bit more open group overall. Um, then in Group C, it's Argentina, Mexico ahead of Poland and Saudi Arabia. Makes sort of sense. I actually would agree with that as well. Uh, with Argentina, of course, the overwhelming favorites in the group. And then Group D. Now, I said this is a very tricky group for France. I would not be surprised if France doesn't make it out of this group, it's, but it's not something that I uh, never would bet on. They are the strongest team in there. France and Denmark ahead of the, you know, Peru, Australia, UAE, 
and Tunisia being the lowest uh, ranked team there. But I actually, if I would actually make my personal pro prediction, I actually would say that Denmark and Peru getting out of this group for some reason, uh, maybe to uh, reverse Jinx Frost in a way. But you know, uh, and kind of continue the trend. It's really, really hard to call for me. I actually could see France advancing from, from the group, but as I said, it's a tricky group. Group E. Now, uh, it's pretty obvious. It should be Spain, Germany, Japan, and, uh, and you know, Costa Rica or New Zealand. Germany will probably get revenge on Spain, will want to get revenge on Spain, but I think Spain is still the more settled squad at this point. Uh, but those two should advance from this group. Then, Belgium, Croatia, Canada, and Morocco, as I said, very, very, very close together, but um, I could see Canada romping through this group. I also think this is a very interesting group, but the model says Belgium and Croatia. Um, let's see how that goes. Group G, Brazil, Switzerland, Serbia, Cameroon. I would agree with that. I think Serbia can do something in, in this group, but they can also just fail miserably. We know that. So, uh, therefore, I think Brazil and Switzerland are the more stable choices there. And then Group H, of course, Portugal, Uruguay ahead of Korea and Ghana. I think that Korea also can do something there. So if those go now like the model did, then we get the following round of 16 already in order so that we have the three going. We would have a Netherlands versus USA matchup. Um, of course, the Netherlands would be fave, fave, fave favorites in that one. Uh, we have Argentina against Denmark. Tricky, tricky, tricky tie. tie. Uh, Argentina will have to fight hard that one. I would say Argentina would move on. We would get Spain against Croatia. We saw that Spain should move on. Brazil against Uruguay. What a tasty tie. Uruguay would love nothing more than eliminate Brazil from there. And it's not uh, beyond them. I would say still model would say Brazil move on. England would get host Qatar. Not an easy task, but you know, you would move on. France against Mexico. Should be France, honestly. Belgium against Germany. The model says Belgium. The brain says Germany. And then Portugal against Switzerland. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this would be the perfect opportunity for Switzerland to, do, to uh, eliminate Ronaldo. No, Portugal move on. Which sets up now the following quarterfinals, according to the to, 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 to model. And uh, this is like the four strongest teams from each pot. Um, from each group move on. We would have Netherlands against Argentina. So A against C. Spain against Brazil, this is uh, E against G, England against France, B against D, and Belgium against Portugal, uh, which is F against H. Belgium against Portugal, and I said there's Germany in there. Uh, seemingly the least glamorous matchup, but you know, uh, if there's Germany in there, it would set up something uh, interesting as well. Now, the favorites in these, Netherlands against Argentina, of course, our Argentina are the favorites. Spain against uh, Brazil, oh, tough one for Spain, um, but I think Brazil will move on there. England against France, classic. France, the favorites, of course, and Belgium against Por Portugal, Woods. Uh, Belgium, see Belgium advance, which they already did at the Euros. So there's a little bit precedent for that as well. And as I said, I still think if the tree gets set up exactly this way, Germany is in the quarter, the quarterfinal against Belgium will make it to the semifinal. That that is my prediction over there, which will set up a very interesting semifinal: Argentina against France, mm, I, I guess uh, Brazil. I see Bra, it should be Fra. Argentina against Brazil in the one semifinal and France against Belgium, a replay of the previous uh, semifinal as well. So two neighbors against each other. Of course, everything would go down to the glamour type between Argentina and Brazil, which then would end up that Argentina plays Belgium in the uh, third place uh, matchup where Belgium is higher rated than Argentina. And then Brazil over France um, in the final. And now I want to end it with the probabilities of winning this tournament. Uh, we have, as I said, Brazil around 13% um, winning the tournament ahead of France with 9.7, Belgium 9.4, then we have Argentina at 8.3, and then there's already a drop to kind of the extended circle, which is England, Spain, Portugal, and Germany. Uh, probably not even Germany. Uh, England has... Uh, 6%, Spain has 5.9, Portugal 5.3, Germany 3.9. I think Germany should go or in the next one. Uh, where the Switzerlands 
are ahead of Den uh, of the Netherlands, even which to me was surprising. The, ne the Netherlands are uh, right there with Mexico. So those are the favorites overall. So yeah, this is my quick analysis of the draw. I hope uh, you enjoyed this one. Please let me know what you thought about this. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and click the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day.